Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this continues to be my budget-built 318. As a quick refresher, in case you forgot, this 318 core originally was in this truck. It doesn't really look like a truck anymore, but it did at one time. This thing had lost a timing chain, and the cam bearings were absolutely roasted, and that is why this truck now looks like this. I'm rebuilding it to put in my 79 Power Wagon here. I'll also be using the 4-speed NP435 manual transmission from this truck as well. So basically the whole drivetrain from this is going in that. But we're making some changes. And when I say changes, it's not like we're going to be making 500 horsepower or anything. But we are going to bolt on these closed chamber Mopar performance heads from the 90s and the rest of this fancy stuff. We're also going to install this used comp cam setup from a blown up 360. Now in the last episode, we got this thing kind of sort of cleaned up and I honed it to my satisfaction. It almost looks like it's ready for assembly now, but it definitely needs a good cleaning before that and a couple other important things. Okay, it's one important thing or five important things depending on how you count because this block still needs cam bearings desperately. I don't think I've ever done these in a video before, so today we're going to learn some stuff. It's not at all uncommon to find really bad condition cam bearings in original engines like this. They wear out, and this is a prime location to lose oil pressure in your classic engine. This isn't a Mopar-specific issue either. So if you're going to attempt a budget rebuild at home, you probably want to give the cam bearings in your engine core a look. Or don't look at them, because if you don't look at them, they can't possibly be bad. Just ask any LS engine builder. Step one is knocking out the cam plug in the back. This is, I think, a stock one. It's got this fancy lip. It's not the normal basic flat dish type. To accomplish that, I've got an inch socket, a long extension, and a hammer. You want to be kind of careful here, but obviously our bearings are toasted, so it doesn't matter that much. You know, I think we're going to be able to reuse that. This is a cam bearing tool. I think I bought this thing off Amazon or something for $120 like 12, 13 years ago. Whenever I was doing my first engine build, I don't even remember. I bought it so I could knock some new bearings into the 360 block I was assembling, and I didn't want to pay anyone money to do that. I have used it a good few times since then. Usually I let the machine shop do this if the block is going there. I just feel like it's good insurance. If anything goes wrong, well, I have someone to blame that's not me. In case you're not aware, cam bearings look like this. Unlike crank or rod bearings, these are a one-piece bearing that has to be driven in and out. Special care has to be taken to ensure that the oil hole lines up the correct direction as well. To accomplish this, we use this collet attached to this driver tool. There's an expanding section here that expands the collet into the bearing. The basic idea is the nice soft rubber will protect this thing as you're smashing the tool with a hammer and driving it home. And we'll get to installing new bearings in a minute here. First, we need to drive the old ones out, which incidentally is like the same exact process. As you can see, I've got the forward section of the tool in the front bearing, and I've held this hex on the back side and tightened the handle, which squeezes that rubber up into the bearing. This should be enough to hold it, but we may end up with this rubber sliding in and our metal lip catching the edge of the bearing. For the old ones, it really doesn't matter. We just need them out of there. But you want to watch that with your new ones. Now this extension here is really great to have for the bearings that are further back in the block. For the front one, it's kind of silly. But we're going to attach it anyway because, well, we have to. This is what you hit with a hammer, not the threads here. Now even though we don't need it for the front bearing, or really removal of any of these, I have installed the centering cone piece. This will center itself in the front hole as you do all the rear ones and help make sure they're being driven in straight. When you get to the front, well, you're kind of on your own. I could run this tool from the back side and drive the bearings forward. It really doesn't matter though. Don't mind the noises of Alan building a barracuda in the background. Had to switch to the wide angle lens so you could see this ridiculously long tool on the engine in the same shot. Anyway. Nothing to her. Do have to make sure the collet's gonna fit through the hole, which it is, it's perfect. Okay, there's one. Now to get it off the tool, I've got to come in here and hold this hex, spin this part of the handle, and then stuff will happen. You couldn't do this with a crank in the way. Incidentally, all five cam bearings are a slightly different size. The back one in particular is small, so we'll have to switch collets for that one for sure. That one's not pretty, but it's definitely not the worst. I'm excited to see the rest of them out of there. Are we moving? Yeah. See how that tool works there? You kind of have to hold it. 
Okay, this is pretty cool. That is the inner layer of the bearing, and that is the rest of it. They separated when I was driving it out. Well, <laughs> we'll uh, maybe we'll frame that one. Here's cam bearing number four. This is the worst one. It has almost no inner layer left. You can actually see right here the seam where this thing is folded into itself. Okay, the horrible bearings are out. Before I install the new ones, I am gonna give the inside of this block a much needed cleaning. Alan did a pretty darn nice job on the outside, but he didn't touch any of the greasy bits here. Dude, I gotta stop working near to these Perkins parts. Oh, there's a guy in a thing. It's a while later and I've cleaned this block a bunch more, inside, outside, bottom, top, kind of everywhere. Ran out of brake clean, uh, I've gotta get some more, so that'll be a tomorrow thing. I currently have the oil galley or gallery or happy hallway plugs out so I can get all the gunk that's gathered in here cleaned. Some of that will go out the back there, which is great. Some of it will probably end up going down the oil feed holes. We'll blow all of that out with a bunch of brake clean and air and it should be just fine. You can see the back here, that one's out, that one's stripped, but this one in here came out, so that's the good news. I did not pull the little core plug style plugs at the front of them though. I'm gonna try and do all my work through the feed holes to the lifters here. I've given the bores several wipe downs. I've cleaned out the lifter bores, although they'll definitely need it again after I'm done with all this mess. It's looking pretty darn good. I think with that done, the plugs back in and then the cam bearings installed, we can assemble this engine. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Anyway, that'll be a tomorrow thing. At least some of that. It's the next day and I'm handling all the final cleaning operations here. As you saw, I was blowing some cleaner into these galleys or galleries or I still don't know what I'm gonna call them. Oil hallways, anyway. Then using compressed air to try and send all of the little bits rearward. It looks better in here. You can see all the fun stuff coming out. Don't know if I'll be able to get you a shot down that passageway, but we got all the chunks. That's the good news. It's still kind of slimy, but I'm not going to worry about that. I had a pretty cool collection of chunks out of the driver's side passageway over here, but I accidentally blew them away with some air, so you didn't get to see that. Anyway, now I'm going to clean the lifter bores again, and then I'm going to blow those passageways out again, and then clean the bores again, and then, I don't know, hopefully it'll be good. We'll put the plugs back in, and we'll get back to cam bearing stuff. I'm still working on cleaning these oil passageways, and here's why. This is a swipe out of a lifter bore, and, uh, well, notice there's a bunch of horrible gunk in there, but also metal material. This is absolutely essential on this block because we know it ate bearings and bits of this metal are in these passageways. Now they're looking a lot better. I think I'm getting most of the chunks out here. It's never gonna be perfect. What should happen, these plugs should be out. And at minimum, one of those big long spinny drill brushes should be run down these passageways front to back multiple times with solvent and then all of the passageways running off of there should be cleaned. Really what should happen is the block should go to the machine shop and get a bath, but yeah, that ain't happening. If your engine didn't need its own cam bearings, you don't have to worry about this kind of thing quite as much as I do. It's a while later and I've got these clean to my satisfaction. Now I will tell you, I got a bunch more gunk out of this driver's side passageway. And I think that's because the passenger side passageway essentially feeds oil to like everything else. You see, this side is fed directly off the oil pump. And then there are passageways out of here that go down to the main bearings. There are then passageways up from there that go to the cam bearings. This side, however, is basically a dead end. All it does is takes oil from the number one main and feeds these lifters. It's not constantly being washed with as much oil as this side is, and there's really nowhere for chunks to escape. So anything that ends up in here, unless it can be forced into one of the lifters, well, it just stays there. So if you do have a case where there's a bunch of nasty debris in your engine, you're probably gonna find a good bit of it in there. And now for the moment I've all been waiting for. It's time to install the cam bearings. I'm gonna do this in reverse of the order I took them out. So I'm gonna install number five first, then four, three, two, one. Recall again, these are different in every position. Number five is obvious, it's much smaller than the others. But all four of these other bearings, though these middle three might be similar, are not the same. Thankfully, in case I drop them or get confused, there is a list on here that says which one goes in which position, and you can read the numbers on the back of the bearings. So that's nice and easy. Cam bearings number one, three, and five have only one oil hole. 
That hole lubricates this bearing surface for the cam, and that's it. Cam bearings two and four actually have three holes, although I'm pretty sure one of those is extra. These two cam bearings lubricate the top end of the engine. The rocker shafts and the rockers and the valve tips and everything else up here is lubricated through these holes, and these holes are fed through these bearings. So as these are installed, you not only have to align the feed hole, but you have to ensure you've got it clocked right so the hole going up to the top end is there. There are passageways drilled through your camshaft so that the top end is lubricated only when this hole and this hole both align with holes in the cam. This is why when you're pre-lubricating one of these engines, you need to turn the crank slowly and line these holes up to get oil to the top end. I would hope this is obvious, but the hole in the bearing needs to align with the hole in the block. The good news is the hole in the block is bigger than the hole in the bearing, so you've got a range in which this will be just fine. Even so, I've clocked it here, and I've left a little paint mark here that aligns there on the block. When I start tapping this thing in, I'm going to ensure that mark is aligned, because of course with the tool in there, you can't see the oil holes. I'll probably do the rest of these with the block upside down so I can see the feed hole here, and then I'll be able to put a mark there that I can watch as I'm starting the bearing. See, it's a good thing I put that mark there. I had the bearing hanging in place, but as soon as I inserted the tool in it, it moved immediately. I was able to line it right back up, and now I've got it started. It's time to drive it home carefully. This is where this cone comes in handy because that holds this thing centered perfectly. So as long as the bearing is straight on the tool, which I don't know, maybe it is, it should go really well. Now I'm installing this bearing dry. Generally I would put grease on something like that, but the word on the street is you don't want grease or any other lubricant on the backside of your cam bearings. And that makes sense to me. All up home. Now basically you want to stop when the machined face of your collet is at the surface, which we are. Where's my wrench? It's in there and uh, I nailed it. Look at that. Actually, it's kind of funny because it's basically perfectly flush, but it's at the back side of that hole. Anyway, looks really good. Now we just have to do that successfully four more times. If you're off side to side or front to back just a little bit, like obscuring part of the hole, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think the factory was worried about that. Once we've got all five of these bearings in, we'll test fit the camshaft and make sure it spins nicely. That will confirm for us that all of these are installed straight and we haven't dinged or scraped or deformed any of them. I've got the block upside down now and I've marked the positions of the oil feed holes with the paint pen. Now I just need to figure out the orientation to line up with the other holes, which I actually think is easy. You see, each one of these bearings has three holes in it but only two are used in these positions. One feeds one bank, one feeds the other. I'm pretty sure those holes are drilled in equal distances. So if I line up the bottom hole, I think the other hole is just kind of taken care of. Yes, sure. It's been a while since I've done this, but yeah, I think you just line up the one and send it home. Bearing number four is installed and the oil hole lined up perfectly, so that's good. Notice it actually sticks through a little bit. The bearing is slightly wider than that journal is. Hey, make sure you clean your cam bearings before you install them because you might find metal dust on them. I definitely didn't forget to clean the first two. I would never do that. I knocked number three cam bearing in and this comes with a funny story. Notice there's a lip hanging out the front here instead of the back. Well, there's one at the back too, but I decided not to drive this one in as far because number four ended up hanging out as far back as it did. Turns out, thanks to classic Chrysler machining, the oil hole is almost half obscured. I don't can't get a really good shot of that, but yeah. And the bearing's in less far than the last one. So I'm gonna have to try and drive it back forward. Partially obscured, fine. Half obscured, it's probably still fine, but I'll try to improve it a little bit. Okay, number two I knocked way too far. Don't even know how that happened. I'll be putting that one back this way as well. Now for the front one, of course, there's nothing for the centering cone to sit in, so you kind of just have to use the force. I think I got it, it's halfway in there. Well, at least that one's perfect. That's the good news. I put the number three cam bearing back forward as far as I could. You see it's flush here on the sides. So yeah, I can't do anything else. And it's still obscuring that oil hole by like a third. It's just gonna have to be what it is. Moving them back forward without ruining stuff is tough. Don't send them too far. Good lesson in there. 
I can't get these holes to line up. That bearing is perfectly flush at the front and like kind of sort of almost flush here. And that's where it is with the hole. It's pretty well centered with it. Anyway, it's just gonna have to be good enough. Obviously there will be oil flow there, but it's slightly restricted and I don't love that. If I were way more talented, I could probably get in there and open up the oil feed holes a little bit, but I'm not. All right, moment of truth. Does the cam do camming? Yes, it does. Very nicely, well, pretty nicely. I'm happy with that. It's good enough for what I'm doing. I do need to clean up the cam plug. I'll seal it up with some of that aviation stuff and knock that back in the back. And we'll be good to go there. Now, another quick note on these bearings. These are obviously a press fit. And depending on your block, you may end up with some little metal hairs or shavings coming off as you're driving the bearings in. You need to watch for that. You don't want to leave them behind in the bearing surfaces or anywhere else, obviously. So after this is done, it's time for another cleaning. I've got this thing looking pretty good now, but it'll get another spray down and blow out with air. I also still need to hand clean the caps. And then, only then, will we finally be ready to assemble this bad boy. I think at this point we've got all the parts in-house to do that. I do still need to clean more components though. I need to clean up this 273 crank we're gonna be using and clean the little tiny bits of surface rust off of there. I need to clean these pistons and rods. I probably need to pull these rings off and clean the grooves behind them of any nasty carbon deposits. We've got a timing chain set. We've got a rod bearing to replace this one that looked like crap. Obviously we've got the main bearings. We've got the gasket set over here and we've got all these other fancy parts ready to rock and roll. Currently hiding under a blanket because we keep making metal shavings for our Barracuda project. Speaking of which, because Alan and I have been jamming on the Barracuda here, oh, spoilers, uh, I don't have any more time to get farther on this 318 this week. So for this video, that's just gonna have to do it. I'm so close to assembling this engine at this point, I can practically taste it, but today's not that day. Hey, it is clean enough to deserve its own blanket now though. If you're gonna attempt to do your own cam bearings, um, yeah, I guess be careful is the best advice I have for you. Anyway, hopefully that helps someone out there. In any case, as ever, thanks for watching. And remember, time management is a valuable skill. Also, not one I possess. Shouldn't have touched that. Wow. Yeah, I'm late for dinner.